Since it's been a whole weekend since we got started on this section, I'll just review really quickly. Um, this section is about colligative properties. Colligative properties depend on the number of particles of solute. It doesn't matter what the solute is. It just depends on the number of them. And um, if we add a non-volatile solute to a liquid, it increases the boiling point and decreases the freezing point. It expands the um, temperature range over which that remains a liquid. And that's, I think I actually meant to delete that slide. See how many years it takes me to get rid of it. So freezing point depression, um, it depends on the number of particles. So we use the unit moles for the solute. Um, but we, use a, we don't use molarity and we don't use mass percent. We use a new concentration unit called molality. And it's spelled the same as molarity except there's an L here instead of an R. And the abbreviation for this is um, lowercase m which I'm not a fan of because that's a meter to me, but this is what it is. It's moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. And freezing point depression, boiling point elevation is the only place in Chem 3A that we're going to use this concentration. But this is different than both mass percent and molarity in that it's the amount of solvent. It's not the solution. The other two, it was the amount of solution. So molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solution. Um, something's missing. Good grief. This is more messed up. There we go. That, this is out of order, too. Okay, this is the next slide. So there's an equation for this. The freezing point depression, um, which is the change in the freezing point. So delta Tf. So delta meaning change, Tf meaning freezing temperature, is the molality times a constant. This is the freezing point depression constant, a very clever name. And that's going to be different for different solvents. I think all of the problems that we're going to do are going to be with water as the solvent. So we use that equation to calculate freezing point depression. What we're calculating here, though, is the change in the temperature. We're not calculating the freezing point. So let's do an example. Calculate the molality. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah. Okay. They were in the right order. Never mind. Okay, this is an example of calculating molar molality. Calculate the molality of a sucrose solution. 50.4 grams of sucrose and 0.332 kilograms of water. So molality, read that carefully. It's not molarity. Um, molality is the yeah, black pen. doesn't work so good. Molality is, is what we're asked for. Molality is moles of solute per kilogram of solvent. So they gave us kilograms of water. So that was nice of them. 0.332 kilograms. They did not give us moles of solute. So we have to convert this, don't we? 50.4 grams of sucrose, C12H22011. Does anybody have their notes handy? We calculated that molar mass last week. I think it was 342.3. Yep, okay. So we did that before. 342.3 grams of sucrose per mole. And that's old hat. You know, it's 12 times the mass of carbon. Yeah, I wrote the formula wrong. It's uh, 22. That's a 2, yeah. 22 times the mass of hydrogen and 11 times the mass of oxygen. So then we do the math. 50.4 divided by 342.3. 
um, 0 0.147. That's the last significant figure, but I'm just going to carry an extra digit along just in case. So that many moles. So that's the number that goes up here. 0 0.1472 moles. So point one four seven uh point one four seven two divided by point three three two equals zero point four four three lowercase m, which is not meter, and we would pronounce this point four four three molal. It's a weird word. Molal. So it's a 0.443 molal solution. Any questions? Okay, so we did that slide. Now we're going to do the example. Calculate the freezing point of an aqueous 2.6 molal sucrose solution. So we need to remember the equation that the change in the freezing point is the molality times the constant. And here we're given the constant and we're given the molality. So we put in here, <coughs> excuse me, 2.6 and molal is moles per kilogram. And then that's multiplied by the constant, 1.86. And this constant has weird units, doesn't it? Degrees Celsius, kilograms per mole. But those units cancel with the molality. This constant will be given to you with its units. And so if you're a little iffy on remembering the equation, you can look at the units in that constant and you're trying to get a temperature so there's you want degrees Celsius that means that you're gonna multiply it by something that's gonna get rid of kilograms and moles and so that's a clue that it's molal if you multiply by molal the units work out and that's how dimensional analysis can save you when you forgot the equation if you combine the information so the units work out, chances are, are pretty good that you'll, you'll get the right answer. So this is 2.6 times 1.86. And this equals 4.8 degrees, degrees Celsius. Is that the freezing point? No. That's the change in the freezing point. To find the actual freezing point, we need to know what the normal freezing point of water is. What's the normal freezing point of water? It's zero. So the actual freezing point, Tf, is going to be zero degrees Celsius minus this to change. And so the, the new freezing point is minus 4.8 degrees Celsius. If you have a 2.6 molal sucrose solution, it will freeze at minus 4.8 degrees Celsius. Any questions? Slightly different unit, simple little equation. The trick on these is remembering that when you find delta Tf, that's not the answer. That's the change in the freezing point. So the boiling point elevation follows a similar pattern. You ever thought about why do you need to put antifreeze in your radiator? Why can't you just use water? Well, around here the biggest problem is that your radiator will boil over in the summer because it gets too hot and the radiator, the water in the radiator starts boiling. The radiator cap has a pressure valve on it so that your radiator doesn't blow up or something else in your engine doesn't blow up. And you get all this steam shooting out of your radiator. Car's too hot. When we put antifreeze, 
Not only does it lower the freezing point, which doesn't really matter around here, but in places like Minnesota it matters a great deal, but it raises the boiling point. So it elevates the boiling point of, a wa of the water, and so it can be more efficient in cooling your engine, because when the water boils and then escapes through the pressure valve, all your, all your liquid goes away, and then your engine gets really, really hot. So the boiling point elevation, same form for the equation, we just change the subscripts. So the change in the boiling point is the molality times this constant. So calculate the boiling point of a 3.5 molal glucose solution. And actually, what it is there, glucose, sucrose, ethylene glycol, whatever, doesn't matter. It's just the concentration that matters. And we're given the, um, the boiling point elevation constant for the water. You do not have to memorize those. So the change in the boiling point will equal the molality times the boiling point elevation constant. So the molality is 3.5 molal, which is moles of solute per kilogram solvent. And then that's multiplied by this constant, 0.512 degrees Celsius kilograms per mole. The kilograms cancel and the moles cancel. 3.5 times... 0.512. So the boiling point elevation is 1.8 degrees Celsius. That's not the boiling point though. What's the regular boiling point for water? 100, right? 100 degrees Celsius plus 1.8 so the new boiling point is 101.8 degrees Celsius. For purposes of significant figures, the boiling point and freezing point of the water could be thought of as being exact numbers because the Celsius scale is defined by them. So the 100 and the 0, think of those as being, I um, lost the word, exact, exact numbers. Any questions?